Hello friends. In this lecture, I am going to talk on the multi-stage impulse generator. That multi-stage impulse generator is called as Mark's circuit. So we are going to discuss with the circuit diagram which is available on the next slide. Here in this circuit, there is a generator capacitance C is to be charged first and then that is to be discharged in the wave shaping circuits. A single capacitor C may be used for voltages up to 200 kilovolt, but beyond that, a single capacitor and its charging unit may be costly and the size becomes large. So the cost and size of the impulse generator increases at a rate of square or the cube of the voltage rating. This is what the simple funda which we are considering. Hence, for producing very high voltage, a bank of capacitors are charged in parallel. So the charging is done in parallel and the discharging is done in series. That is what the proposed by the Marx circuit. In fact, there is a modified Mark circuit which is available for the multi-stage impulse generator. Let us take this particular diagram where the DC supply is available. There are certain elements which are to be noted. First, C. C is the capacitance of generator. Capacitance of generator. Then G, G with a spark gap. This spark gap is having two electrodes and the third electrode is controlled either manually or automatic. That is motorized control may be given to it and that basically placed in between these two conductors, that is conductor one and two. So this moment of this third conductor in between the two conductors reduces the gap between the two and hence the spark takes place. Another way of getting the spark between these two electrodes is by reducing the distance between the two. So either or the way that reduction and the spark takes place between the gap of the electrodes. Then T, which is placed here, is the test object. That test object is nothing but the specimen which is placed. Then we have RS, that is called as charging resistors. Charging resistors. Then we have two resistances placed here, which are called as the wave shaping resistors. The electrical elements can be used to have that wave shaping. And here there, are, there is a use of these two resistances, R1 and R2. Now, as per the discussion, that is previous slide, this particular capacitor, which we are saying is charged parallelly. So here I am considering four capacitors placed and across which you can find there is a four spark gaps. So when the DC is applied, let us say this as positive and this as negative is given to the circuit, the capacitors charges parallelly. The capacitors charges parallel. So this capacitor get charged from this. This capacitor get charged from this A. This capacitor and the last one. So it charges that capacitor to the value of the supply voltage V. Now here we have to generate the impulse voltage. This impulse voltage as we already discussed in previous lecture, 
for the basic impulse wave shape where we get the impulse wave shape of this kind the 50% attainment of the wave during discharge needs time period and that is generally of 50 microsecond as per indian standards that discharging time is of 50 microsecond but the charging time or reaching to this peak level is time period t1 and that is 1.2 microsecond so the time required to reach to this peak value is very less that is of 1.2 microsecond but the discharging time is higher than this particular time period that is 50 microsecond and that to only 50% of the discharging voltage so therefore here we have to generate this kind of impulse wave shape now let us back to the circuit again so this positive supply charges this capacitor to the required voltage so this schematic diagram shows the mark circuit the charging resistance rs is chosen that is it is selected to limit the charging current and the value of that as 50 to 100 milliampere that is been used to have that particular charging current value as 50 to 100 milliampere and the charging or the generator capacitance c is chosen selected such that the product c into rs is about 10 second to 1 minute it is 10 second to 1 minute the gap spacing chosen such that the breakdown voltage of the gap g is greater than the charging voltage v thus all the capacitances are charged to the value of voltage v in about 1 minute so here that charging time is high to that particular capacitor now when the impulse generator is to be discharged the gap g are made to spark over simultaneously by some external means or by adjusting the gap between the two electrodes so during charging these capacitors get connected in parallel so therefore in previous slide it is already mentioned the charging of the capacitor takes place in parallel while discharging the gap between the electrodes is adjusted either manually or by some motorized means so that so that the capacitor's charge starts discharging so the way of the discharging of that particular capacitor is in this manner so this capacitor discharges from positive to negative through this gap this capacitor is also charged as positive to negative and discharges in this manner this capacitor is also charged from positive to negative and discharges in this manner so now this capacitor get connected in series with the spark gap g which is connected in series with the next capacitor again with the spark gap and in series with next capacitor and spark gap and last capacitor and the spark gap so when these electrodes that is spark gaps are adjusted the spark takes place and that spark is nothing but the discharge of the capacitors but when these capacitors get discharged simultaneously in series the total voltage becomes very high as all these capacitors get connected in series the voltage get added and the total voltage appears across the test specimen which we have connected in the circuit but that discharging takes place till the spark gap sparks and the capacitors are char charged or capacitor is having that particular charge within so when these capacitors get connected in series the capacitor voltage that is voltage across each of the capacitor get added and through that spark gap that voltage appears across the test specimen 
and that voltage is called as impulse voltage so it means the impulse voltage reaches to this particular value during the discharge of the capacitor across the test specimen so we get this kind of impulse we get this kind of impulse and gradually that impulse uh, redu reduces and hence we get the discharging of that voltage so when this capacitor discharges across the test specimen that test specimen get tested on the impulse voltage level so when the impulse generator is to be discharged the gaps g are made to spark over simultaneously that is done with the help of some means all these capacitors get connected in series and discharge into the load capacitor load capacitance or the test object here the discharge time is c into r1 upon n where r1 is the wave shaping resistance and n be the number of stages that will be very small that is in microseconds so that is compared to the charging time constant of c into rs where again that c is the generator capacitance but rs is what the charging resistors so this c into rs decides the time of charging of the capacitor and c into r1 upon n that is n be the number of stages decides the discharging time of the capacitors so when that capacitor discharges the total voltage get appeared across the test specimen and that time is in microsecond so like in wave shape of impulse that time is in microsecond and indian standard says it is 1.2 microsecond so there is no discharge takes place through the charging resistors rs it is used only for one direction and no other direction we have another circuit called as modified marx circuit this modified marx circuit is shown wherein the resistances r1 and r2 are incorporated inside the unit we'll see that particular circuit in next place next page r1 is divided into n parts that is equal to r1 upon n and put in series with the gap g r2 is also divided into n parts and arranged across each capacitor unit after the gap g that is what the difference in this point number 2 and point number 3 this arrangement saves space and also the cost but in case the wave shape is to be varied varied widely the variation becomes difficult the additional advantage gained by this distributing r1 and r2 inside the unit is that the control resistors are smaller in size and the efficiency is high that is v0 upon n into v where n be the number of stages the nominal output voltage is the number of stages multiplied by the charging voltage we'll see and we are going to use this particular equation while solving the numerical so the nominal energy stored is given by 1 upon 2 c1 into v square where c1 is c upon n that is discharge capacitance and v is the nominal maximum voltage that is n times the charging voltage so this is what our circuit is where it consists of r2 resistance r2 upon n or we can say that this is rs rs upon n rs upon n rs upon n and so on this resistor is r2 upon n n be the number of stages and so on and so on this one is r1 upon n this resistance is r1 upon n and the capacitors are n c1 where the dc supply is given on this end now there are certain components which are used those components are already been discussed the first component is dc charging state the charging unit should be capable of giving a variable dc voltage of either polarity to charge the generator capacitors to the required value charging resistors these will be non inductive high value resistors of about 10 to 
kilo ohms each resistor will be designed to have a maximum voltage of 50 to 100 kilo volt generator capacitors these are arranged vertically one over the other with all the spark gaps aligned the capacitors are designed for several charging and discharging operations on dead short circuit the capacitors will be capable of giving 10 kilo ampere of current spark gap spark gap is g this g will be usually spheres or hemispheres of 10 to 25 cm in diameter sometimes spherical ended cylinders with center support may be also used that central support so that that adjustment can be done then there is need to have a triggering system so that triggers the spark gap that causes the spark and hence the breakdown of the gap then we have a voltage divider voltage divider voltage divider of either damped capacitor or resistor type and an oscilloscope with a recording arrangement are provided for measurement of the voltages across the test object then we have a wave shaping resistors and capacitors resistors will be of non inductive wound type and should be capable of discharging impulse current of 1000 ampere or more then each resistor will be designed for a maximum voltage of 50 to 100 kilo volt 50 to 100 kilo volt the resistances are bifiller wound or non inductive thin flat insulating sheets in some cases they are wound on thin cylindrical formers and are completely enclosed the load capacitor may be of compressed gas or oil field with capacitance of 1 to 10 microfarad so this all is about this wave shaping resistors and capacitors in model impulse generators they have their wave shaping resistors included internally with flexibility to add additional resistors outside when the generator capacitance is charged that is in series parallel connection such a generator is optimized the set of resistors a commercial impulse voltage generator uses six sets of six sets of resistors ranging from 1 ohm to 160 ohms with different combinations so this is all about the max circuit that is impulse voltage generator here we are going to use few equations to solve the numericals based on the wave shaping elements which are used so t1 is equal to 3 times r1 in numerator c1 into c2 in denominator c1 plus c2 t2 is equal to 0.7 r1 plus r2 into c1 plus c2 and v is equal to number of stages multiplied by charging voltage so we'll be using this these equations to attempt the numericals which will be discussed in next lecture so that's all with this understanding of the marx circuit and modified marx circuit hope you understood thank you so much take care